Welcome to Politics Done Right. My name is Egberto Willis, your host. Good morning, Houston. Good morning, Harris County. Good morning to the great state of Texas. Good morning to the great country of the United States. Good morning to the world. Good morning to every nook and cranny receiving the signals from our 100,000 watt transmitter in Houston, permeating Northeast Texas, Southeast Texas, North, Southwest Louisiana, Northwest Louisiana, and of course to the great internet where we're able to promote, to listen, to preach throughout the entire world. We have a great program for you today, but as usual, before we get to the program, we get to the geniuses in the studio, the ones who really make things happen. Buenos dias, mis hermanos. And good morning to Brisbane, Australia. Why yes, the heck why not? <laughs> good morning to happy Texas. Oh, well, dime box is right by right, happy, isn't it? I, I believe so. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> we have old dime box and we have new dime box. Yeah. But yeah. only in Texas would you have an, <laughs> would you have a city named dime box? It was like that town in Blazing Saddles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, good morning to you, Egberto. Looks good like the morning. 10 can are holding up here. And it came up right away. That's the magical thing. There was no fiddling or anything like that. I guess it wasn't a weekend, so, you know, all, all all the programmers that played with all those buttons didn't really mess anything up. Well, the prison chair wasn't on, so... I, I oh, 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 leave or leave our prison brothers alone, my friend. They do some important work. They do. With... Uh... With David Collinsworth, the guy who runs the prison show, he's always saying, well, everybody blames the prison show for everything. We don't do anything but bring good radio. And, and, and you guys, you, you tell us all the time how much we mess up stuff. So, David Collinsworth, if you're listening, <laughs> we just blame We you, love man. you, David. We love you, David. We yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. So, Jack, you, you have a page of wisdom here for us. Well, uh, it's not really about wisdom. It's kind of like look at what, what we're doing, you know, what, look what we're doing to the earth and, you know, to each other these yeah, days. That is uh, not wise what we're doing. Yeah. All right. What about Mother Earth? Industry wants. To, oh, good morning, Egberto. Good morning, Joe. I mean, <laughs> Jack. <laughs> it's going to be one of those days, huh? Yeah. Yes. Okay. What about Mother Earth? Industry wants to expand, profit, and pollute and leave its toxins for mom to clean up. The people are slaves to their possessions, consumption, and materialism. Just think, your mortgage, car notes, utilities, and thousands and thousands of plastic containers with lotions, detergents, and condiments and stuff. All brought to you by the industrials. Every penny you spend goes to them. They have designed your life for you. By the products you buy, we all are all just pawns and being manipulated by these industrial giants to act the way we are. Well, that's a very nice uh, thought there, but I was hoping that they would have a better life for me. <laughs> Did they design well, you your life? Y yes, well, it's, yes, it's yes. The same. It's the same old grind, you know. Get up, go to work for the for the for the man. Come home and cook your dinner for the man. It's well, I am you know, a man. It, it all goes upstream, you know. It's all it's all shuffling up instead of to the people. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't shuffle. It shuffles up instead of out. Yeah. So we got to yep, yep. get a direction here. All right, Egberto. We are not going to hijack your show today. Well, you know what? You got to say. As usual, Jack always tickles my thought process, and he's right about that. You know, we are so mechanical. You you get up every morning, and you go, and you look outside, and you go to the bus stop, and you see everybody at the bus stop going to work or jumping in their cars to hit the freeways or go to the bus lot to get driven into town or, or whatever. We are a working society. We work very hard. Americans... Americans ought to be uh, praised for their work ethic. And while some would have you believe that there are groups of people that simply want to live on the dole, 
it's not true. I mean, it's easy to make an example in big cities of a group of folks, not a, a very minority for, part of the entire population, a small portion of the entire population that you would see on the streets not doing anything. The vast majority go to work. You go to the county, you go to the city, you go to the grocery store, you go to every single store. There are people working for less than their worth as the people who employ them or the people who run them make a whole lot of money. Don't buy into the game and don't buy into hating your brothers and sisters when they try to make an when they try to paint on you the few stragglers out there that have no intention of working but living on the dole or however they want to say it. Don't let them paint that onto you. And let me tell you further, even many of the folks that we consider living on the dole, they've made that economic decision that is best for them in a, in a society that works this way, just like that stockbroker has made that economic decision that he can be a parasite on, on the backs of you, on your back. But we'll go into that some other time as far as how we measure worth and whether the stockbroker is any different than the person who's collecting food stamps and making a profit from food stamps. And what I mean by that is there are businesses out there little small businesses that are actually profiting they, they their source of income is the selling of food stamps just like the stockbrokers source of income is buying and selling uh stocks etc but that's for another day yesterday i got pretty perturbed that our brother brian and the first of all let me tell you what the store the program is about today the truth about Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s candidacy is out. Trump abortion words will follow him. A Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s campaign official makes it clear that his campaign is a fraud to elect Trump. That happened. It was released yesterday. Trump abortion words will follow him. Uh, he came out with a new set of words that really didn't say much yesterday, but we'll talk about that. Um, I want to talk about the oil reserve because what happens in the right wing is that they start a story and they give the story false legs. Our brother Brian brought up the oil reserve. And what I want to do is knock that story dead. And when I say knock that story dead, I want to finish that story for you. And then I want you to be the source of information as you hear that misinformation that's going to grow about the strategic reserve. Remember, Republican leadership, the right-wing leadership, they are great at creating a false narrative and then having it to be believed, even by people who don't share the ideology. So we're going to go over that about the strategic reserve in a minute. But since we already have Dr. John on the, on the phones, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to defer to Dr. John, and then I'll come back to this story. Then we'll talk about Robert F. Kennedy, which I did on my 3 o'clock show. And if time gives us an opportunity, we'll continue with uh, the other subjects. Dr. John, come on in. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good yeah, morning, you know, sir. As you know, I, I, yes, sir. As you know, I've, I've jabbered on enough about RFK Jr. and my uh, my support for his candidacy. But... um. But I don't I, think you're going to support him after you hear my narrative today, but that's cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I'm open to it, of course. I'm open to it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just a nostalgic Kennedy guy, I guess. I know. But, I know. Uh, I know. Yeah. So, uh, but is it okay if I bring up uh, some education? This is your call, your oh, oh, your show, my okay. brother. This is your show. Talk, please. Yeah. Okay. What do you, What are your thoughts on um, on um, President Biden's proposal to forgive student loans, and shouldn't the market itself adjust what majors people get? Because if they, like I have four sons, I tell them get a degree in one of the hard sciences, you know, chemistry, physics, math, engineering, business, finance, you know, one of the solid sciences, and learn Spanish. That's that's my 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 uh, or you know, another foreign language. That's my my call to my boys, and all all of them are doing that. Um, but if they got a, a degree in, um, oh, I don't know, 
environmental studies, then maybe they could work in, for a, a green energy company. That's great. Or if they got a, uh, in, um, in some of the one of the, uh, you know, hyphen studies programs, I'm not sure they're so marketable. And shouldn't the market just correct itself? Because if we forgive all the loans, we're just encouraging the same behavior. Now, so let me, uh, 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 let me uh, give you my answer. Okay. My answer to that is the following. Um, when my daughter decided to go to college for a subject, that's one thing I made sure not to do. And that is, and I'm not saying, first of all, let me just say that each family have their own dynamics. That's, you know, so your dyna dynamics is your dynamics. My dynamics is my dynamics. That's a great thing about what we preach about the freedom to have diversity in thought and diversity in everything. Now, personally, I don't believe there is really a market to speak of. You know, people like to talk about a free market and people like to talk about all of this. And we've been indoctrinated under that belief from our inception, our birth in the United States. Uh, and uh, we are made to believe that there's this thing called the market and everything is based on the market. And that somehow free, if you if you read uh, some of the issues from those uh, market based people, you would believe that, well, this market is self-correcting, et cetera. I think if we take a look at uh, the, our society today, I think it would clearly prove that the market is a failure. Yes, we have great big skyscrapers. Yes, we um, and I'm going to get to your answer to the answer, but I, I need to create a little build up. Yes, we have great skyscrapers, great buildings, great freeways and great all these things. But as Jack brought up earlier today, the truth of the matter is everybody is working their bejesus off to go to work every morning, to get home and cook food, to take care of their kids and just ring in. You are a doctor. You worked in, in an emergency room where you put in more hours than anybody else doing a job, right? And the market, what did the market dictate there? Let, let me tell you where I'm going with this. We should be the one dictating the market, not the market dictating us. And this thing that there is a free flowing market based on what people want goes against what even Reagan talked about when he talked about supply side economics, because supply side economics under that tenet claim we provide supply and demand will show up. I believe in demand side economics. In other words, if your son want to be a dancer, right, and he goes out there and he creates uh, uh, that dancing scheme on the street that that people then like and create that creates an income that's great if it doesn't create an income well i guess you made the wrong choice and you move on and do the next thing i am an engineer by uh, i am a mechanical i'm a i'm a mechanical engineer that's what my degree from the university of texas is in the only mechanical engineering I did was to design a stand for data general and a knob for data general for a printer. Thereafter, I went into my what I called my hobby. And all of the money I've made to buy my homes, my cars, and everything else was from my hobby, software. And I, I learned software pretty much a little bit at, at UT on my own. And, I, and then I created a company out of it did very well with it. I guess what I'm trying to say is you individually is the market. And the, the idea that there is some broad market out there is one of the biggest charades, in my humble opinion, based on everything that's out there. It's something that's been manipulated by those that have capital and those that have and, and those that have capital, most of them hadn't earned that capital. So I guess to turn around to your question about whether we should let, uh, 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 you know, what you told your kids is perfect, I think, for a market economy in the way it functions right now. In the utopia, maybe that I believe in, that I think we are going to eventually get to when people get sufficiently frustrated, I think uh, that f that freedom to be what you want to be and what you really like to be would do the things of removing suicides and all of that because suddenly people are going to be who they really want to be. As far as, as Biden's forgiveness of loans, even the loan structure, as I see it, was is one of the largest frauds on the market. We go to college and get educated oh. so that we can 
go ahead. did you want to answer that did you want to say something yeah no 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 i agree with you that the, the government backing of the loans is the problem yeah you know, so let me let me give it let me give an example of that right here is the biggest well, fraud on the market yeah. that obamacare solved the biggest fraud on the market was this and a lot of people don't understand and it goes this way when you were when you got a loan that loan was given by a private bank and the, the fees and interest was collected by the private bank and that loan was then guaranteed by the federal government that said the following if that loan defaults the federal government would make the bank whole that took away all the risk from the bank so why are we charging interest if interest is being charged to run the bank and to mitigate the risk these are now, issues no brother the bank. No, there's no more no exactly yeah you na yeah, you nailed it um, yeah mm -hmm. so what yeah, i'm well, saying I, I, is well, when, I, when, I, when i took out loans for medical school i had to go to the bank and look at the banker in the eye and promise to pay back my loans yeah. and uh, i paid them back in full as with as well as my wife's phd and mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to pay you know for all my sons the 529 which i i think is a good idea the 529 is a good idea I had one for my daughter as well. Yeah. But let me just say, let me give the yeah. caveat, my brother. And the caveat is this, right? Yeah. When you and I went to school, when I started school at the University of Texas, I started as a foreigner. It was $40 a semester hour. When I got my residency because of my sponsorship from my grandfather in New York, I then got my I, I got in-state tuition from $40 an hour to $4 an hour. But that is still substantially less, not only based on inflation, but substantially less than what I had to pay for my daughter to go to school and not to speak about what she had to borrow to get her medical degree. Now, the thing about it is this, right? We do all this studying and they want us to pay for all of this. So here's the deal. The corporations have reduced their tax support for colleges and universities, right? But these college and universities provide the raw material that they need for their business. And then when we borrow to uh, when we borrow to pay for those college educations, they profit from it. And at the same time, when we are paying back our loans, they profit from the interest we pay on the loan. So is Biden forgiving student loans a good thing? You betcha. And not only do you betcha, but it's good for the economy because it's going to throw a whole lot of money right back into people being able to afford homes, etc. These kids that are borrowing money today are borrowing a lot more for not as good a product that you and I had. And, and, and I think we have, been, we have wronged our kids so badly based on our current economic system, supposedly a market basic economic system and i think um, yeah, but yeah, I, I think we have to get to that position and understand that uh, that what we've done to our kids you know we talk about how millennials are and how gen z's are that's a product of our own creation to some extent the selfishness of neoliberal uh, neoliberal capitalism so that's my take yeah well i, I tend to agree with you uh, you know and, and as as always. Um, uh, now, can you tell me briefly your, your take on RFK? Because I don't, I don't want to take up all the time. Okay, but, no, no, with, not with, right. Yeah, and, and I want to talk about, I also want to talk about the um, the oil reserve first. But here's the, the thing about RFK. Bottom line is, it is it is clear from RFK's, poly, uh, RS, one of the people in RFK's um, staff, that the idea that the short, the goal is to not get Biden elected, they understand that he cannot be elected, he won't get elected, but they also understand that he would put a wrench in to ensure that Biden doesn't get elected and thus Trump becomes the president. And he believes that Trump would is a much better choice than Biden. 
So I mean, all of that is in. There's a video that she that she did. It's online. I didn't I didn't copy the video because I didn't know who made the video. When I do MSNBC, I know it's there and they don't mind you using clips. But this one I didn't know, so I didn't put it in. So I make mention in it in my monologue. But we'll talk about that later, Doctor John. I appreciate your call. Okay, I'll I'll listen in. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you, brother. Okay, and welcome to the chat, Eric Hayes. Uh, from Kingwood, we also have Bruce Davis from Portland, Oregon, and we have uh, Patrick Barron. I think Patrick Barron is from Florida, and he says, "Good morning, everyone. It's six days until the Dumpties New York extortion <laughs> trial." And let's see, Bruce Davis says, "Hi, Egberto. Good morning from Portland." All right, folks, I want to talk a little bit about the Federal Reserve. And by the way, you guys can call at any time: seven one three five two six five seven three. Eight. Again, that is uh, 713-526-5738. Um, let's see. RFK just want to take votes away from Biden is what Bruce Davis says. Okay, let's talk a little bit about oil reserve because what's going to go into the space and get a, a legs of its own is people are going to say that Biden sold down the oil reserve and how dangerous that is. That's the people on the right are going to be telling you that. And it's even going to likely permeate the minds of many even soft Democrats, etc. Let me first say that one of the problems I have with the right is the intellectual dishonesty. The right talks about wanting uh, the government out of your lives, yet it wants to control a woman's body. It wants to control the kind of sex that you have. It wants to control where you go. Uh, it, wants to, it wants to have all these controls, but they say government stay out of our private lives. Inconsistent intellectual dishonesty. Uh, it talks about a free market, but at the same time, it wants to control what you can and cannot buy, what you can and cannot see. Look at the, the Texas, uh, and, and, and you know, well, I won't go into that particular story. So the intellectual dishonesty is what gets me. It, it said it wanted market-based health care, and it supported Romney care because Romney care didn't do the what it really should have done, and that was removed insurance companies out of the basic healthcare market altogether and have one entity, a single payer, paying the bill. The most efficient form of paying for medicine, we need to do more for drugs and equipment, medical equipment in hospitals. But that's that is further down the line. But Romney care followed the pathway of what the Heritage Foundation said. Uh, should be done. Romney Care was just from Massachusetts. Obama picked up the Romney Care model and model Obamacare off of Romney Care with a few additions. Same, something that the Heritage Foundation should have loved. We wanted a private option to the medic to the Affordable Care Act so that we could reduce prices. But no, the private market is what they wanted. And that's what Obama gave them. That is what the Heritage Foundation, which is the Bible of the right, the Bible of conservatives, wanted. But when Obamacare came out, they flipped and they didn't want it anymore. Now with the, 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 the uh, Strategic Petroleum Reserve, they are now complaining that Biden drained it. He didn't. I mean, it's half filled. Well, it's 300 and something billion bar uh, million barrels in in that uh, strategic reserve it has a capacity of 700 something million barrels okay it the price of the average price of oil that was in that reserve was at 29 dollars and it was sold off at uh, half of it was sold at you know uh, at not market prices but auction prices that was higher than that and by the way what the reserve does as well is exchange oil if a if a shipment of oil is missing or is in a hurricane or whatever, oil companies would borrow the oil from the reserve and then put it back in later on. All right. But remember, the Heritage Foundation's stance on the oil reserve was the following. We need to abolish it. Oil should be stored by private companies. Right now, private companies are storing 400-something million barrels of oil. The oil reserve is storing, it usually stores about 600, 700 billion. It now has about 300 something billion. So right now, private sector has more oil in storage than the national 
uh, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Biden has started to refill the Petroleum Reserve when, you know, when the prices go down on the market, etc. All right. Why am I bringing that up? Because, again, remember, the conservative Bible, the Heritage Foundation, said they are for the elimination of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve and that that should be done by the private sector. And, you know, following their ideology, they're correct. If you believe in a completely market-based system, et cetera, and let the, let the market drive everything, then that's what you believe. Of course, folks, I want to remind you, I can prove categorically there's no market. Everything is manipulated by those with capital. There ain't no market. That's why Donald Trump could create DJT, and it somehow created $7 billion, and he became uh, $3 billion richer out of thin air a company that makes no money. That's our market system. That's our stock market. And that is, a, that is the, the bloodstream of our market system. Understand that. But anyway, back to the oil reserve. So therefore, the oil reserve, the Heritage Foundation wanted it gone. All right? So that's item number one. The intellectual dishonesty for them to accuse Biden of selling oil to reduce the cost to the American people says that they rather criticize a president and just uh, and keep the American people in pain for something that they said should not be there in the first place. That's what conservative Herit Heritage Foundation, the Bible of conservatives, told you. We need to get rid of the oil reserve. Now, let's go a little bit deeper. The purpose of the oil reserve was to cover shocks in the market to the United States. In other words, if <laughs> Iran and all these people get into a war and uh, we don't get our daily shipments of oil that we need to survive as an economy in the United States, we had that oil reserve to tap. Why? Because in those days, in the 70s, during the oil shock, etc., it harmed our economy. It harmed our people because we were importing more oil than we could produce here in the United States. So therefore, since we could not produce enough oil in the United States for our own usage, we had a strategic reserve to bring oil uh, out, to, to put oil on the market if there is a disruption. But guess what, people? We have more oil in the United States being produced. I'm not talking about just the existence of oil. I'm talking about the oil being produced in the United States of America. We are producing more oil than we're using. In fact, we have a net export of oil in the United States right now. Okay? So anybody saying, uh, what that means is the strategic reserve is not there to prevent disruptions from the outside to America. The strategic reserve can actually now be used in case our allies are disrupted. Maybe we can send them some oil, etc., etc., etc. But the fact is that <laughs> for once, someone could partially agree with the Heritage Foundation that the oil is just there sitting down. But let's put it a bit further. Right now, that reserve is used for exchanges of oil. Exxon uh, goes ahead and brings oil into the, into the country or have a ship, a big ship on the sea that somehow gets delayed. They will go ahead and say, hey, government, I want to use you, government, to exchange oil that I'm going to get later on. Can I borrow this oil? And when my oil comes in, I replenish it back to you. And government says, OK, I'm loaning you the oil. And when it's done, you just give me back the oil and we're all square. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That sounds to me like government helping a corporation. Oh, but then they don't believe. Isn't that some sort of mitigated socialism? Hmm, I don't know. Wow. And by the way, that is an easy way. It, it, look, folks, the dishonesty of the right when they come up with these stories, uh, can only work if we maintain our intrinsic gullibility. 
And what we try to do on this program is together eliminate that gullibility that just buys into the next scare that these people bring about. Because that is all that they do. They play on your fears. They play on the fears of people scared of homosexuals. They play on fears of people scared of black people, Latino people. They fear of scare. They, 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 they prey on this fear of white people that somehow they are going to be replaced. And in being replaced, what's going to happen to them is what their forefathers did to these others. It's all about fear. It's all about fear. And when you're fearful, you make bad decisions, and a few people profit from said bad decisions. And what I try to do here on this program is as honest as I can, as truthful as I can, as open-eyed as I can, is to tell us, let's, not, let's stop fearing each other and realize that we're in the same boat. And as when, when you hear our brother Brian come with those stories, and I love having Brian on for several reasons, because what Brian hears, I, 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 can use what, I can use Brian as a window, mostly into misinformation that he gets and that we can correct and mitigate for. Uh, he is necessary. Those that promote misinformation that we can hear is necessary so that we can set the record straight. All right, I got a, a piece, and it's fairly long about, uh, not long, it's only about eight minutes, seven minutes or so, about Robert F. Kennedy that I did on my sh three o'clock show. And by the way, if we don't cover everything today, please go to politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter, politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter, where we have all the links to the shows and all the previous shows, videos, etc. But let's go ahead and play Robert Kennedy piece that I clipped from my show uh, yesterday, and then we'll come back. I've got some news for you. For those of you who believe that there is a real, that, that RFK is in it to give you something of value, that somehow those that are funding RFK are not in there to fund Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is not in there to just be a spoiler to make Donald Trump president again. I want to read you an article from The Common Dreams. Again, Robert F. Kennedy, one of the Kennedy people, is nothing but a fraud. Check this out. Whole thing, title of the article, whole thing is an epic fraud. RFK Jr. official admits goal is to elect Trump. As the saying goes, when people show you who they are, believe them, said a Democratic National Committee spokesman. Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s stated platform in the 2024 presidential race centers on promoting an honest government, a clean, healthy environment, and the protection of civil liberties. But this New York State director last week boiled down the independent campaign's true goal at a meeting with Republican voters ensuring former President Donald Trump wins the election. Speaking at a meeting last Thursday, Rita Palma first checked to make sure there were no Biden voters in the House before telling her audience that her number one priority is to ultimately take electoral votes away from President Joe Biden. The Kennedy voter and the Trump voter, said Palma, our mutual enemy is. Biden. States including New York, California, and most of the Northeast are likely to vote for the Democratic president, she continued. But if Kennedy, whom Palma referred to as Bobby, is on the ballot in New York, the campaign can, could help get rid of Biden. She urged the assembled GOP voters to give their vote to Bobby and at least get rid of Biden and give those 28 electoral votes to Bobby rather than to Biden, thereby reducing Biden's 270 electoral votes to 100, 270 wins the election, added Palma, who was hired by Kennedy's campaign after she canvassed for Trump in 2016 and 2020. If nobody gets to 270, then Congress picks the president. So who are they going to pick? If it's a Republican Congress, they'll pick Trump. So we're rid of Biden either way. 
Political observers have noted in recent months that Kennedy has drawn support from right-wing billionaires, but Palmer's blunt description of her plan to block Biden from winning the presidency left critics stunned as the video of the event circulated on social media on Monday. Whole thing is an epic fraud. Kennedy is spouting Russian propaganda, is now openly betraying the country said political strategist Simon Rosenberg, referring to the candidate's recent comments about Russia's claim that it aims to denazify Ukraine. RFK Jr.'s campaign is saying the quiet part out loud. Matt Corridoni, spokesman for the Democratic National Committee, told CNN, as the saying goes, when people show you who they are, believe them. RFK Jr.'s campaign isn't building a plan or strategy to get 270 electoral votes. They're building one to help Trump to the Oval Office. I repeat, for all of those progressives who believe Senor Robert F. Kennedy somehow carried the virtue of his uncle, for everybody who thinks Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was there, to actually do something positive. First of all, I don't know what, what folks are smoking to believe that a vaccine, a guy who actually has conspiracy theories and all that sort of thing, how could you possibly believe that this guy whose family themselves are saying, please don't vote for my brother, please don't vote for our relative using the name Kennedy to get votes. Please don't. Please don't. Kennedy is a fraud. I repeat, Democrats who think they're voting for a progressive, a Democrat, they're voting for somebody orchestrating along with Donald Trump, the return of Donald Trump. It's a perfect orchestration and it has snowed a whole lot of people. So again, RFK is not trying to win this election. RFK is seeding the election to Donald Trump, whether Donald Trump gets the ability to get 270 votes or not. I think, folks, this is not a smoking gun. This is a nuclear explosion. And I think I am surprised. It just shows you that the set, it just shows you that the setup is in, right? If this were on the other side, if this was on the other side, this would have been big news. It would have been all over the media. But it's not only Republicans that want Trump to win by all means necessary. It's not only Republicans that want that. There are certain neoliberal Democrats that are upset that progressives are getting a gain hold on the president of the United States. Because we have to remember where Biden is from. Biden may be a neoliberal, but he's a neoliberal dragging and kicking. His heart, Biden's heart, and I'm no Biden fan, but you don't grow up with the people. You don't grow up as part of that strong, working, middle class, and it just completely be left behind. You can't do it. It's intrinsic to your being, and that is what we must notice. That is what we must be cognizant of. Persuasive Barrier, welcome. Barbara Wills, welcome. Lee Grant, welcome. E2247, Bruce Pollard, Michael Rudnin. I'm going to read some of your things in a minute. Eric Hayes. Uh, let's see who else we have in the house. Thank you guys for all. Wow, a lot of, a lot of stuff. Or Paul Fleming, welcome aboard. Uh, if I miss you, forgive me. I just started right away and, uh, and started this stuff. But anyhow, folks, so... Tell your friends, all your friends that think Robert Kennedy is going to be the savior of the progressives. Robert Kennedy is the one that if we could just get him to be on the ballot, so somehow he could win. It is there for a purpose. Robert Kennedy needs to be placed in the bin of what he's doing. He's a traitor, not only to his family proper, but he's a traitor to the country. He's a traitor to the country for having elected somebody associated and closely guarding the interest of the Russians so that maybe Trump can build a hotel and get some of his bills paid. Let's not fall for it, folks. Let's spread the word 
because the mainstream media is not going to do it. We spend a lot of time deconstructing, deconstructing the news. And that, and that, 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 that was, that what, was I did, what I did uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday on the, on the, on the program, on the program when I found, when I, found, uh, when I, you know, I kind of got, got, got a tweet of that tape of that out, and tape then, out, then, then I ran to comment dreams because the comment dreams, dreams, dreams have already written, written up about it. About it. Which, in fact, which, in fact, they did. They did. Welcome aboard, Welcome Pat, aboard Pat, Housekeeper. How are you doing this morning? This morning. Let's see. Let's see. Good, good chat good, going good chat on. Going anyhow, on. Folks, anyhow, folks, again, so, with, again, with respect, with, with respect to, RFK. to RFK. Look, look. Um, I'm on. Um, there are a lot of people. A lot of people are very, 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 very upset. Very upset. Very upset. Biden, and that's fine. And that's I don't fine. have a problem, I don't have a with, problem that. with that. But, but uh, I always tell I always people, tell people if, you upset, if you are upset at Biden, at Biden and you want, and you but, want, you want but you want the progressive, you have to, you go, have ahead to go ahead and pick and your person, person in the primary. And there is absolutely nobody. Body. Absolutely, you know, Absolute, people, you know, people say, well, Biden, Biden, had, Biden it had it in. locked in. I am sorry. I am sorry. Biden never, Biden had, never it had it in. locked in. If somebody, if somebody really wanted, really to, wanted to do a real challenge, real they, challenge could. they could. If somebody, if somebody wanted, wanted to do, to do a, a real, real challenge, challenge, they could. They All right, could. let's go to All brother right, Augie. Come on in, Augie. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Uh, recently, the Kennedy uh, family had a family uh, photo taken with all the family members. And there was one person missing, and it was that Robert F. Kennedy. Robert, Robert F. Kennedy. Yeah. Yep. But, 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 but who they included in their family picture was the Bidens. They had him in there right in the middle of the family. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. That, that's but a whole lot of the RFK. And but uh, talking about Brian, I know he got you excited, but uh, you no. Know, um, when he when he uh, I think last Friday he said somebody he did his research. Well, he didn't do the research when uh, he got mad about uh, the uh, the Arabs calling their God Allah and him calling him God. Well, he didn't do any research. He didn't look in the Bible for all the different names that he had. And then uh, he also was uh, saying some of the Palestinians right after that that uh, what did they uh, create? He said, and he said, and he said the Jews created this and that. But he was comparing oranges to apples. He was saying the Jews, that's a religion, and comparing to Palestine, well, that's a state. Well, if you want to really compare religion to religion, what did the Muslims create? They created math, they created numbers, they created architecture and science. And, uh, but, you, you know, I uh, find it ironic that people don't understand that when you, there's a reason why it's called the Arabic numeral system, right? <laughs> Yeah. Go ahead. And he always the gotcha question, which a, a lot of Republican followers do. They try to get to with the gotcha. And instead of a, and he wants you to re answer it. Well, instead of you answering, instead of, okay, well, why don't we just save time? Okay, why don't you tell me about what you got? Make it a statement for for whatever facts you think you got. And, uh, but, uh, it seems like he's repeating stuff he hears on Facebook instead of actually doing any research. And and, he just... and, and Augie, that is the thing, right? And that is not only Brother um, uh, uh, Brian and others, right? That is what a lot of folks do on all sides. But, you know, the funny thing is a clock is always right twice a day, right? So, I mean, progressives can fall into the same trap. I, I talk about certain aspects of capitalism that progressives have bought sink you know have, have bought into that that uh you know they would they would go down my throats when i say certain things right uh we are all victims all of us are victims of uh how we were reared and 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 these external inputs what i try to do and i'm glad we have folks like you calling in is to kind of make those inputs a bit more receptive to being able to discern the difference between BS, facts, and just, I kind of thought that, you know. So anyway, continue arguing before I get to art. Yeah, and there was a guy that came in after you got upset with Brian saying, hey, but you didn't uh, love, give us our opinions. Well, these right-wingers, uh, uh, they don't care about facts and truth. They care about opinions, misinformation, disinformation, propaganda. They're equating that with truth. Uh, I don't think uh, truth uh, and lies are equal. I, uh, I think right. uh, truth, uh, pardon the phrase, trumps lies. And oh, it hey, always look, should be that. It should have. I, 
I, I don't know if you heard my discussion coming in. I, I made sure to tell the person that, look, if you take a look at, at um, uh, you know, even, even the way you deal with things, you, what you want is at least intellectual honesty, consistency. You can't say you want freedom at the same time you want to control a woman's body, control their sex life and everything else. They, uh, you can't say you want the government out of your life if you're saying, but I want the government to control this and that part of your life. It's inconsistent. You can't say you want to get rid of the the, the uh, strategic petroleum reserve and then uh, complain when uh, when Biden sells some oil to bring the price down. It's inconsistent. Okay, but Augie, I need to right. jump to art. Anything else before I, before I jump to art? Yeah, well, yeah, they don't like to be told, but they sure like to tell people what uh, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and the other guy said uh, he wanted the scientists, you know, the people go to school to be scientists. So what about uh, people who want to be teachers, want to be librarians? And uh, somebody said, uh, uh, calling America a great country, and somebody said, well, it can't be a great country if you don't have the arts, if you don't have the dancers, the musicians. The, you know, you know the, I have the, a soft spot for food. teachers. I have a soft spot for teachers. Once people t- t- say the word teachers, for me, it's like, oh, the people who carry knowledge forward. Yeah, but no, uh, Dr. John is a good guy. I understood what he's saying. That is a common, that is a common thing that uh, a, a lot of that I've got into the lexicon. That is, uh, let the market dictate what you're going to be. I mean, you may want to ask why there are so many suicides comparatively now, because the market may dictate that we just want to make everything out of corn, right? Which is what it has. Uh, but that's not what we should do. By the way, folks, check out food.inc, the old one that was made in 2008, food.inc. Please watch the old thing. Go to YouTube and watch the entire food.inc because food.inc version two is going to be out on Friday. I want you guys to see the first one. Please, please watch it. You learn about a lot of things that I've spoken about in my book, as I see it, Class Warfare, the only resort to right-wing doom. It's a very important watch. Anyway, Thank you, Augie. Let's go to art. Come on in, brother art. So yesterday I uh, mentioned uh, one person, one vote. And if you let me finish, I, I can make this. Their um, Cornell Law School uh, website, it shows that it, it one person, one vote refers to the rule that one person's voting power ought to be roughly equivalent to another person's voting power within the same state. So you said you had never heard of it. So yeah, it's probably because it's not an actual law, but it is I mean, an actual rule when it comes to voting. But it's always been known for a law for equality. Like my vote is as important as your vote. So that goes to my original point yesterday. If the Democrats and Republicans would stop working together to keep Robert F. Kennedy, and I'll get to that later, Robert F. Kennedy off the ballot, that one person, one rule, uh, one vote rule would be helpful to the Kennedy um, uh, yeah, um, process of, of voting, to, so they won't, you know, trying to cheat okay. and keep them off the back, both sides. Okay, both, bro- this is both brother sides. Art, I, uh, Art, I just gave a complete narrative about what Kennedy is doing. Yeah, you can, it, you can choose uh, my brother. It, Hold on, I, didn't I let you talk? Heard it. I made you talk. Yeah, now let I me talk. It. Thank you. Well, now, I done. Uh, are- you can choose. You can. I don't have a lot of time left. Art, I don't have a lot of time left, so you may have to call back tomorrow. But you can choose to believe what the people in the Kennedy uh, campaign is saying or not. I can't help there if you choose not to believe that. One person, one vote is a fallacy. You can't have 47, 40,000, 40 million people in California only have the votes of two senators and in, in, in Nebraska where you have or whatever the state is with less than a million, get two senators. That's not one person, one vote. I don't care what you read about one person, one vote. We have a tendency in America to tell a story that's not true. There is not I, one I, vote, I, one person, one vote in America. We'll talk another day. Art, I promise you, call earlier tomorrow and you'll get more time. Let's go to Brian. Real and Brian, you got to be short as well because I'm running out of time. Thank you, Brian. Come on in. Okay, uh, you you need a, a lesson in economics. What makes gold so expensive versus lead being so cheap? 
Let me tell you what, yeah. and I, I'm glad you, I'm glad you said that because I know economics very well, both macroeconomics and microeconomics. The, what what makes gold more expensive is just the fraud. And let me tell you something here. That's why Nixon got off of gold, right? Nixon was a smart Nixon was Porn. a smart dude, and you know why he's smart? Because he realized in in a crisis. You may people may think gold have value, but you can't buy if you you can't buy bread with gold. Gold in itself, by being gold, okay, has on. no value. Oh, I'm not done. Vol, gold by itself has no value. The faith that people have in your economic system is what has value. And you know who recognized that when he took off the gold standard? President Nixon. Continue. You got 30 seconds. Okay. No, it wasn't Nixon who took us off the gold scan standard. Okay, corn. <clears throat> How much corn is there? If you got a lot of it, it's cheap. If you have none of it, it's expensive. It's the same with oil. Biden made a real brilliant move by cutting the trans, uh, 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 Transco pipeline, right? And then he approved the one for Russia. And okay, Brian, I'm made, not going to – Brian, Brian, Brian. Yeah. Okay, Brian, I'm not going to – Brian, I'm not going to get into this with you right now because we don't have a lot of time. I gave you the whole write-up on the, the, the SPR. You can go to energy.gov and learn about it. Brian, I got to cut you off, and let's go to Donald real quick. <laughs> And by the way, go to energy.gov people to to qualify what I've spoken about. Donald, come on in. Good morning, Barta. How many letters Good. are in the word work? Work four, I think. Oh, worth five. Work. W O R K four, right? Okay. Oh, four. Okay, I I, I got you, the word wrong. Yes. You, you can't put the. Yeah, you can't put the F four letter word in front of work and be successful. You got to put the work in. You can't sit there and go be a master basket weaver and come out of college and do 10 or 20 years in college and be a professional college, getting your stuff paid for and thinking you're going to have to have a job. You have to work to get it. And you know what? You don't even have, if you get it to be an engineer, you may not even focus on engineering when you have that. There degree. you go. That That's exactly knows you're right. Intelligent. And you, we will find a place for you if you come out of a right school and you align with the company to move Donald, the company forward. Donald, you Even nailed you it. You need to. Donald, as usual, you nailed it, okay? You nailed it. You don't need to say okay. anymore. You nailed it. Thank you, brother. Yes, you too. All right, let's go to Derek. Come on in, Derek. Uh, one minute, Derek. Hey. Hey, good morning. I just want to say, uh, uh, what's really what's really looking bad for Democrats right now is, is this whole Israel Israeli uh, Hamas thing, uh, Alberto, because the United States is saying that they are they are not uh, liking what the coming out strong publicly saying that they don't like what they are doing. But at the same time, the press is saying that oh, but we're going to continue on giving them bombs and giving them airplanes, that, that's, that seems like a form of betrayal to me. Uh, it is actually. Uh, no, no. Le Le Derek, let me just tell you real quickly, because thank you for bringing that up. And thank you for actually putting that on air. That is not only a betrayal, that is a false. That th I mean, that is saying like, OK, now 33, 33 is uh, the IDF and Netanyahu has murdered 33,000 people after he allowed 1,200 Israelis to be killed because he's he's complicit in the 1200 Israeli progressives that got killed. And Netanyahu is complicit in that. It's been proven. Now, that said, for us to continue to supply him with weapons and not tell him you will get out of Gaza now, we are the one that created Israel for you. You will get out of Gaza now. For him not to say that, you're absolutely correct. And that has to be, look, you can't bring back the 33,000 people that are dead. You can't. But it is wrong, and he's going to pay a price for that. Absolutely pay a price for that. But the thing about it is he is still for our – when I'm voting for uh, – let me take my whole stat off. When I'm voting for Biden in 2024, November, I'm not voting for Biden the man. 
I am voting for all the policies that are going to come from having a Biden as opposed to having a Trump. That's what my vote is. And I am trying to impart on people that when you're voting, the way you think about it is not the person you're voting for, but exactly what are all the permutations and policies that come with that vote. And Derek, thank you so kindly for bringing that up. But one last thing. Remember, we don't have the moral authority to be all that prejudicial on Israel for what they are doing. We have to have the moral, the right. moral clarity going forward because what, uh, what Israel is doing to the Palestinians pale in comparison to what we have done to our natives, to what we have done to many others. So let's not play the holy roly here. We are great, a great country or we are becoming a great country now. And we can continue to become a great country by not supporting those who are doing what uh, Israel is doing and what we have done. Thank you so kindly, Patrick, for bringing, giving me the opportunity to say that. You're going to pay for it. You're going to pay for All it, right. brother. Thank yeah. you, brother. Let's go to Harry. Come on in, Harry. You got one minute. Oh, you got 30 seconds. Sorry. I went oh. and pontificate. Go ahead, Harry. Okay, uh, I'll be real quick. The question I uh, I have, because you made me think when you played that Robert F. Kennedy uh, piece, I, I think maybe Robert F. Kennedy wants to uh, uh, get Trump reelected because I believe those Trump tax cuts expire in 2025. And if he gets yes. if Trump gets back in there and we get a Republican Senate and a Republican House, he's going to extend those tax cuts and give another tax cut. So that's Robert F. Kennedy's motivation. I guess he wants another. He wants a tax cut as well. That, that's my thought yeah. on that. There you go. So, I mean, I can't work for the rich people. I got to work for all of us, the, the working class, the middle class. That's who we are. So thank you very much, Harry, for that. I got to go. I want to finish up here with Harry. Thank you for enlightening us, Chief Teller. Thank you for enlightening us, Myrtle. Take care. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Let's go to uh, Brother Jack and Brother Howard. Well, nothing from me except that uh, don't vote for RFK because it's, that's a vote for Trump. That's, that's how the third party works. If you vote for RFK, it's a vote for Trump because it's taking away from Biden's strength. So we gotta we gotta not let, elect Trump. That's all there is to it. Go ahead, Jack. Corporate welfare is corporate socialism. Well, and well said. All right, that's that's, that's great. Anyway, folks, look, I I want to thank all the callers. I want to thank all the listeners. It is so important for us to have our eyes wide open. There are some that we'll never convince, like my brother Eric Hayes, going crazy in the uh, in the room right now. But still love you, Eric. And uh, but look, we have to be smart in our vote. Uh, thank you all. Uh, let's talk about this tomorrow again. My name is Egberto Willis. Remember to go to politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you know how I end this, baby. I am what? Out! <laughs> <laughs>